Hey everyone, welcome back. So, in this video we're going to simply talk about some of the the overview features of the setup menu of the Cognex Vision View uh, 700 series. So, I've gone ahead and powered up this Cognex controller. I've gone ahead and gone into the settings menu um, for Vision View setup. And in there, I'm looking for a particular camera to show up in the selected sensor system. So this should have the whole list of sensors that are connected. Now I don't have any connected so that's why nothing's appearing here. But should I have one connected and it's not appearing in the window I would go auto select sensors and it's going to try to detect it for me. Now it's looking for anything on its network. It sees nothing so the run button's not going to come green for me. When the run button comes green there should be a sensor here selected and I can hit run. Now I should have up to four sensors that can be detected and I can hit run and it's going to go ahead and broadcast that information on four different windows. So with that being said then I could also go to manually select sensors and should I know what sensor is appearing here I could go ahead and hit add sensor um, and I could go ahead and select the display name, its IP address, what um, what the sensor type is, is it a micro, is it a DVT camera, that's the old school camera obviously, or is it an Insight series camera. So I could go ahead and select that, set its IP address, set the display name, and then click OK, and then it would automatically appear over here in my, my window. I could also hit refresh, and it's going to do an auto detect just as well as it does a manual detect. Once it has one, then I can either add it to my sense selected sensor list, or I can remove it from my selected sensor list, I can also remove all. I can set some defaults over here in my selected sensor list. Once I'm satisfied with all that, I click OK. It's going to add all that information into my selected sensor menu. Now again, don't have any sensor selected, so can't make that adjustment. If I want to change the language, I can go to language, select English, uh, Japanese, Chinese, South Korean, German, uh, Spanish, French, or Italian. I speak English, so I'll keep it on English. I could do a screen layout. I could kind of adjust some of my screen layouts a little bit. I can do um, some status icons if I wanted to have them. I could do a trigger button on here. I could do a switch view button. Um, do a language button as well. Obviously, whatever we had defaulted as an online offline button, and then some sensor configuration as well. I can put my film strip on. I can shut it off. Um, job control. Basically, that allows the operator to go ahead and adjust some. Um, uh, to change the jobs within the, the camera. So you might have a multi multi job camera and we'll talk about jobs in another video about um, Cognex vision sensors. Uh, you can adjust the image. So this is kind of a big one that we've seen more in the, the new thousand series that they came out with. Um, they also have an ability for us to do a little adjustments, kind of some fine tuning on the camera if you will within these these HMIs. And then again, like, if you want different icons, so one that's kind of like a gray area, you could do like a triangle. Um, in fact, let's just go ahead and open that up and see what our options are. So we can do okay, no good, oh, we got a problem. Um, you can do a check mark, or you could just keep them as, as symbols. I like the symbols. All it's going to do is show up on the film strip as a green dot or a, a red square or then a upside down triangle, um, yellow triangle. Click OK. That sets the defaults. If you want to go in and change some other settings, here's some other options you have. You could change security settings, um, some of your sensor settings again, so you could change your name, sensor password, so if you don't want people adjusting your sensors and stuff like that. Um, again, you have some display settings here that we could change, so if we don't like our brightness, we could turn the brightness up or down. Uh, dim intensity, interact inactivity timeout, so is the screen going to go black after a while if there's no changes, anything. And then kind of change like your dim and inactivity, so receiving new images, whatever you might want there. If your screen seems out of calibration, go to the display settings and then go into your touch calibration. You could connect the mouse to it. Use your mouse to kind of help drive your arrow cursor around somewhere. Um, in this case, the calibration is good. I'm not going to go into adjusting that. Click OK. Image settings gives us kind of a, a little bit of an adjustment here for um, kind of your speed, your focus a little bit. And then obviously like show the images with a shape of pass, fail, warning, unknown, some of that information there. Most of that we'll actually change in the camera, not so much here. Network settings is where we're going to allow this to be what we want to name it. 
and our current IP address. So in this particular case, we have 169.254.10.220 or 233. So that's really helpful. Um, we could obtain it automatically, or we could go ahead and set the IP address manually. Um, I always set it manually. Don't do the obtain IP address automatically. It's a nuisance. It's annoying. You need to know what your IP addresses are. Set them yourself. Why? Because when you go to connect to this sensor, you don't know if you're copy pasting that particular IP address and you're going to have an issue. All of a sudden, you've got 1,500 bad parts just simply because you connected your PC with the same IP address as this or the camera itself. Know your IP addresses. Always know your IP addresses. Anyway, I'm going to hit cancel because I'm not going to worry about setting that right now. If for some reason I have a program that I need to run in this, I can back it up with USB. Again, we do have the USB ports that we talked about previously in the bottom here. You can back it up from USB, you can restore it from USB, or if you need to replace everything, you can restore from factory defaults. And then start up, restore view on run. Okay, So it's basically what that's saying is we're cleaning out all of the backed up information and it's not it's not the backed up information as in camera programs those are actually stored in the camera and not on the vision view this is deleting everything that was in the film strip when we go to start run so when I take it out of run and I reset something and then I go back to run it's gonna clear everything off of the film strip for me I can uncheck that and I won't have that problem anymore so once you're happy with that click OK it's gonna set all that information in select your camera hit run it's gonna start running your program or it's gonna start displaying your program your camera remember your camera is kind of a standalone system that's always going to run whether the vision view is running or not um, the vision view does help run the camera so if you take it out of run it took the camera out of run so those are some of the things where they kind of interlink together but there are some things that they don't interlink on like the, the programs themselves are stored in the camera but you can have the ability to change them in the vision view. You can take it in a run and out a run, and you can change a few other things. But remember, they can be standalone systems. However, the vision view will always be a slave to the camera. So, something to kind of pay attention to. Um, so everything I got for basic vision view setup of the vision view um, 500 series. So, again, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for additional videos.